page eight. Page eight. <laughs>
special request, 35. <laughs> Good stuff, brother. crazy for feeling this way, but if, if the Lord called me aside and said, Scott, there ain't going to be no heaven for you, but you ain't going to hell. When you die, you're just, that's just it. You're just, it's just over for you. It'd still be the greatest experience I've ever had because of the joy that comes into my heart from the guilt that I've felt my whole life from denying my Savior is taken away. Lord, thank you so much for that. Who's got a song for us tonight? Sierra? An angel told me you were going to sing for us tonight.
Yeah, come on. Let's go. When he asked us to sing his song, I was sitting there thinking, every time I get up here, I know that I say, well, you know, I know I can't sing, but it's all right because, because I'm doing it for the Lord. And I want to I live my life for the Lord. Right. Really, I love all of you, but it really don't matter what it's kind of like as long as he's listening. But, uh, but I was sitting there thinking, he asked me to sing his song, and I thought, man, it ain't always easy to thank the Lord. I mean, it's Wednesday night. Everybody in here is tired. Yeah, I can see it. I come in here just like that too. But I, but I had this realization in the choir. I was like, man, man, I was feeling a little dry. Like, you know what, man? It's Wednesday night. Everybody's tired. But you, but you know what? I'm gonna praise Him anyhow. Amen. I'm gonna praise Him anyhow because right. because I believe I know. And the longer that I'm in this thing, Rick, I realize that you know what? Sometimes, sometimes He sits back to see if we're gonna thank Him. Right. To right. see if we're gonna praise Him. Maybe your blessing's right around the corner of a hand raise. Maybe your blessing's right around the corner of a testimony. Or something. But uh, anyway, there's this song that David requested. I'm glad that he did because it helped me. You just keep obeying the Lord and doing what God's got for you. He's got something good for you in your life. All of you. Not just him. All of us. Thank you, dear Lord, for being so good to me. When I was alone, you took me in your sweet company. You gave me new hope, said that I could live eternally. And now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. And with all my heart, and with all my soul, thank you for Calvary. It's treasures untold. Thank you for heaven fair and the place you prepared me there. And with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. Life is full of snares. Trials seem so hard to bear. It is then that I reach for that hand I know is always there. And finding he still cares, just bow my head and say this little prayer. Now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. And with all my heart, and with all my soul, thank you for Calvary, his treasures untold. Thank you for heaven fair. And the place you prepared me there, now with all my heart, I thank you, Lord. Yeah, It'd be a crying shame, sister, after all the stuff that God done for me, that I couldn't do just a little old something for me. Yeah. I appreciate the Lord tonight and all he does for me. Well, Thank the Lord for that record book. Thank the Lord that the Holy Ghost Spirit will come down and speak to somebody. And thank the Lord that some people will listen to it. It's a scary thing. Hey, standing up here behind this sacred desk, and me no kind of a preacher or nothing else, just barely a decent human being, if, if I am that. It's scary. But if you want a blessing from the Lord, you're going to have to meet him halfway. Yeah. Sometime or another, you're going to have to stand up and say, Here I am, Lord. This could be your night. Anybody, uh, anybody else want to sing a song for the Lord? Or has anybody got anything they'd like to say for the Lord? Even if it's just, Thank you, Lord, for sparing my life.
thoughts more our faults and frailties bring me here just like before with strong and loving hands the pressure is applied We're going to sing one here.
finish. That was great. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Come on. It just strikes me that when the Lord wants somebody to get up and praise him or somebody to get up and do something for him, somebody's going to do it. If you're missing your chance, Brother Gavin, are you ready? Y'all pray for him that the Lord will give him the words that we need to hear tonight. It's good to be in the Lord's house tonight. I've been excited all day. I've been nervous. But most of all, I've been excited. I, I, it feels so long since I've been up here, and uh, it almost makes me feel bad. Because I ain't been up here in so long. But y'all pray for me tonight. I don't, I'm don't. i trusting in the Lord on going the way I want to. He wants me to go. Uh, nervous is, and I'm pretty nervous tonight. I'm always nervous. It's always a, a good opportunity to get up here and preach. Uh, I ain't worthy of nothing. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know why he called me to preach out of anybody. I, I don't get it. Don't understand it. But I'll stand up here and I'll do what he called me to do. It's better than working in the world. It's better than working, doing heat and air. I love this better than anything. I do it full time and not even care if I made a dime. I don't care. But if y'all would tonight, turn to the book of Isaiah. I got this thought uh, a while back. And you know, a lot of times the Lord, Isaiah 40, uh, verse number 31. Uh, I get a lot of thoughts, it seems like, uh, just driving down the road and seeing something. Uh I saw this happen a while back, about two weeks ago. I've been studying and studying on it and uh, trusting the Lord. I didn't know. I told Heath Sunday I had a thought, and uh, you know how it goes. You'll tell him you have a thought, and it'll change most of the time between the time you preached and when you told him. But y'all just pray for me tonight. Uh, Isaiah 40, verse number, I'm going to start in verse number 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and even the and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You can be seated tonight. I, I kind of want to slow down a little bit tonight. Uh, I kind of want to go through on how I got the thought and what the Lord's laid on my heart. And uh, I, I was driving down the road a couple months or a couple weeks ago. And uh, I, I was uh, almost home, and uh, we've been seeing a lot of hawks and stuff lately near the house. And I saw one, it was, it was kind of about the, the height of a power pole, power line going through. And uh, I saw it, I noticed it started flying, and it was flapping its big wings. And uh, I saw this crow pestering the, the hawk. And, you know, uh, a crow, uh, as low as you think they would be, messing with a hawk, a, a beautiful bird. Uh, the Lord laid on my heart. And I know I've heard it before preached uh, several different ways, but he laid on my heart about eagles. And I, I didn't know where I wanted to go with it. I didn't know what I needed to do. I prayed and I, I, I seek for the Lord. I have some notes scribbled down. I don't even know if I'll hit them. I don't know if I'll even uh, say anything that's on the paper. But I, I started studying this and uh, I started looking up the, uh, the traits of an eagle, the stuff they do. And, and to be honest with you, they're, they're a lot like we are. And the Lord in the Bible, he, he, he refers to eagles and compares them to, to us. Uh, uh, eagle, uh, I started looking into it. I started doing some research on them. And uh, eagle, uh, I want to skip to the very end right now. And I, I know I can. It's exciting. I uh, but I started looking here about eagles, and I got some uh, statistics and stuff on them down on this paper. And uh, I want to start right here. And uh, if uh, I'll start, in, I'll start in Deuteronomy and Exodus. Uh, the way the Lord took me towards that, uh, I started reading about it, and He uses Scripture towards eagles and stuff. And uh, I, I started reading, and it, it, you know, Deuteronomy, it's Moses, and then you got uh, over in Exodus, and you know, in them verses, uh, it refers to eagles, it refers to wings of eagles, and how the Lord brought the Israelites out of slavery. He wanted them to be their holy nation, and He started referring to them as that. And 
uh, he told them, he said, if you obey my commandments, I'll, I'll turn over to it. He said, if you obey my commandments, he said he would watch over you. I got to thinking about that, how he said he would watch over them. It's kind of like when you take them eagles, when they have little babies. I think it's sad when I read about them, they have like two young per year, which ain't a lot. But I got to reading about that and how a mother will watch over them babies and how they'll protect them all their life. And it's like the Lord. He watches over us daily. There's not a time He don't let us go. There's sometimes, you know, I feel like nobody's around, but He's always there. It don't matter what I'm going through. It don't no matter what I'm doing. But the title I got on here tonight is like Brother Scott said, you might have a blessing around the corner, but you're nested too low. You know, you take them eagles. Them eagles don't nest low. You know, when, they, when the young ones are born, them young ones, kind of like us as Christians, they'll start flying, but they ain't flying high. They ain't going as high as them with the mama or daddy. But I'll tell you right now, sometimes in this walk of life, when we get dry, I was dry a while back. I ain't going to lie to you. I testified about it last uh, Wednesday, whenever it was. But I'll tell you, sometimes we feel like we ain't flying high. Sometimes we feel like we ain't doing nothing. Sometimes I feel like I'm just sitting over there and I ain't feeling, I see everybody else feeling something and I'm just over there dry as a shuck. I ain't feeling nothing. I, I want it so bad. But I tell you tonight, them old eagles, when they, uh, when they start getting older, they start flying high. And I'll tell you something about an eagle. And I got to thinking about this real hard. You know, an eagle don't flap its wings like a regular bird. They're too heavy. It'll kill them. They wait on the wind thermals to pick them up. Now, if you nest it too low, you ain't going to get them wind thermals. And I'll use the wind thermals as God. If you nest it too low, you ain't going to get them thermals to send you higher and higher and higher to get closer to Him. And you know, an eagle, yeah, I like this part a little bit. I like it a lot, actually. You know, an eagle rejuvenates themselves. That's a big word for me, too. But they rejuvenate themselves. They renew themselves. As they get older, they fly closer to the sun. It burns their feathers and takes the mist out of their eyes. Their beak gets so long they can't eat. So they'll pick it on a rock until it breaks. And it'll grow back, but it allows them to eat. Now if you think right here, we're just like them. If you think about it just for a second, we're just like them. It says they fly closer to the sun to rejuvenate. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we go closer to the sun and fly up to Him and go to the highs when we want to renew ourselves. We renew ourselves daily. Unlike the eagle, he might rejuvenate himself when he gets older. We renew every day. But we gotta, if you nest it low and you ain't catching that wind thermal, you ain't going to be able to go up towards Him. If you nest it too low, you're comfortable. And when you nest it low, I'll tell you something else about the eagle. This just hit my mind. I didn't even write this down. But like Brother David said, you feel like you get some strength when you come to church. And you do. But them old eagles, I'll tell you something about them. And I'll tell you something about them crows. Them crows will get on them eagles. They'll get on their backs and they'll peck at their neck. But the eagle don't react. You know what the eagle does? He keeps flying higher. He keeps flying higher when no matter what's on his back fighting him... Ten to one, an eagle would beat a crow. Ten to one, an eagle would beat a crow. But when that crow gets on his back, he don't stop climbing. He don't stop sinking. He keeps going. And that's what we got to do. We might have, you might have people on your back. You might have people, I mean, just condemning you because you're a Christian. I know it's hard in school sometimes with that. But I tell you that, I tell you, it don't matter what's on you. It don't no matter what's on your back. You got to keep on climbing. You got to keep soaring. And when that storm comes, that wind thermal will pick you right up. And sometimes you'll go through that storm. But a lot of times when that, the Lord will come by, He'll pick you up and you'll be able to see over the storm. You won't be going through it. You'll be seeing through it. You'll be seeing all that's in it. You'll be away from this old world. But if you nest it too low and you ain't getting that wind thermal, you're going to be around the world. 
And maybe that's why some of us, including myself, I struggle. I get dry. But sometimes I don't get filled up as much as I do. And it's because I'm down here when I need to be up here. A lot of times the Lord will lay these messages on my heart. And it helps me a lot. It might not help nobody here tonight, but it helps me. I had a two point, number two point on my paper here. And it's be willing to fly to the sun. Be willing. Be willing. Maybe you nested low tonight. You might be nested low and you might be so comfortable where you don't, you almost sometimes, you know, feel embarrassed. You might feel embarrassed and your pride might be getting to you just to come up here and get closer to, the, to God and closer to the Lord. But you have to be willing or you'll stay where you're at. If you don't want it, you ain't going to get it. In this walk of life, you got to want it. You got to strive. You got to get closer. You got to climb higher. And if you don't, it's like Brother Andrew said. Even in the dry times, praise the Lord. And you might be nested high tonight. You might feel at your all time high. And you're waiting on the Lord to come by with something good. Just wait on the thermal. Wait on Him. Don't do it in yourself. Wait on Him. I promise you, He's the best thing that you'll ever have. The best thing you'll ever have. There's nothing in this world that, that, that can compare to it. Nothing at all. You can have all the money. You can have all these things. You can have all these vehicles. But that don't mean a thing in the end. That don't mean a thing. But that old eagle is just like us on the outside when it gets older. But it's just like us in our daily lives. Sometimes we're worn. Sometimes we're torn away at this old world. It's hard working with people sometimes that don't live it, don't go to church. It's hard. I, sometimes, I mean, I, I get down and out about it. It is. It's tough. It is. But this is our refuge. This is our refuge. A place you can come and give all your cares. No other place you'll go in the world and get that. No other place. You may be nested high. You may be nested low. I know I ain't been up here long. No matter what it is. God can fix it. No matter what you may need. You might be in a dry spell. You might, you might feel like you need to come up here and, and fix some things. You might feel like you have something on your back. You may feel like this old world's just crawling you down your back trying to get you. But you have to be willing. If you're struggling, you can't just sit back. You can't sit back and say, well, Lord, I know you're going to fix it. And he will. But if you keep staying where you're at. Where this old world can just keep knacking and bothering you. You have to be willing. You have to come get it. Like Scott said, sometimes you have to meet him halfway. I wrote down here. Second <clears throat> Corinthians 4.16 Turn over here real quick and I'll be done. Which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is not but not for a moment, worketh for us far more exceeding an eternal weight of glory, 
While we look not at things which are seen, but at things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I got to reading that too, and kind of putting them together. You know, when Paul wrote this, he was smart and truthful. Because you may not be able to see him, but he can fix it. You just have to trust and have the faith. And sometimes we may get as low, like I told you, feel like we're flying low and our faith is low. But whatever it is crawling on your back, keeping you down from getting closer to the Lord, he can fix that tonight. It don't have to be that way. It don't have to be you being dragged down. If Diane will come to the piano, I'm done. That's all I feel like I need to do. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to be short and brief with this. But I just want to ask you tonight. Do you really feel like you're as close to God as you should be? Do you feel like this old world's just dragging you down, trying to, trying to pull you back? Keep you from growing closer to Him? And do you feel like you're just so low that you don't know how you're going to get back to the height you need to be at? God can fix it. Every time He can fix it. And maybe you say, Preacher, I don't know how He'll fix it. I don't know how to get back to that height. Well, He can do it for you. All you got to do is ask.